Hey guys, it's Casey. A lot of people have been asking me what Bill 115 is and how it affects students. So I wrote something uh, that I want to read to you um, that succinctly explain my beliefs on the matter. Education Minister Laurel Broughton has imposed contracts on public school teachers under the minor minority liberal government's controversial Bill 115 as of yesterday. What this means is a freeze pay for most teachers for the next two years and reducing sick days by 50%. It also limits how much unclaimed sick time can be cashed out at the end at retirement, which probably means zero. Uh, Bill 115 unconstitutionally takes away the collective bargaining rights for teachers. The government is spreading propaganda saying that this is the union's fault for missing the, missing the negotiation deadline of January 1st, but in reality, they weren't really able to negotiate contracts under Bill 115 at all because saying take it or leave it is not a negotiation, Laurel Broughton. And now they're having this contract forced upon them. This putting students first act is total bullshit. Straight up. The Ontario Labor Relations Board is prohibited from inquiring into whether this act is constitutionally valid or if it is in conflict with the Human Rights Code. Does that sound good? No terms or conditions included in a collective agreement under this act may be questioned or reviewed in any court. Uh, no. All teachers are subject to a two-year pay freeze and even a pay cut for PA days. The bill also limits the legality of teachers' unions and support staff going on strike. So, in retaliation, teachers have started what I'm hearing called a work-to-rule strike. That means they fulfill their contracts, alright, but to the letter. That means no doing anything that's not in their contract, including extracurricular activities like coaching sports and leading clubs and after-school homework programs. This sucks. But I don't blame them for this, and you shouldn't either, no matter how frustrating it is. They have rights, and we, as their students, need to support them, okay? I mean, I have to design a yearbook without any staff, input, and our school's GSA and clubs all across the Niagara region, and Ontario, I guess, are being shut down and disbanded. And that's not fair to us. And it's not fair what they're doing to teachers either. Remind me again who this bill is putting first, because it certainly isn't the students. I'm going to finish this vlog with an open letter to our government. <coughs> Dear Canadian government, you say you're looking out for your students' best interests, but what you're really doing is punishing the teachers' union for daring to challenge your authority. Your petulance sets dangerous precedents and will have consequences. Rather than try to discuss, to compromise, our government hides behind the back-to-work legislation. Save us from the inconvenience. But how can employees attempt to affect change if they have no right to act in their own best interests? Without the power of collective bargaining, the individual employee is easily discarded. Without the risk of job action, of inconvenience, nothing motivates an employer or a government to come to the table. In the shadow of your students' first rhetoric, graduating students like me will enter a working world where they must forfeit their voices for a job and accept the, their employer's terms, whether they are reasonable or no. You, and those like you, encourage employees to disregard the people upon whose shoulders they stand, upon which you stand, Laurel Broughton. This behavior benefits no one but government officials. If you're going to make a bill detrimental to both teachers and students, at least have the balls to call it what it is. You are not putting students first. You're putting yourselves first. And it is shameful.